Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to project number six of 25 beginner JavaScript projects. In this application, we're going to be creating an image carousel. I created a website dedicated to the projects that we're going to be building in this series. You can find it at jsprospect.com. I also talk a little bit about the technologies that you need to become a web developer. And you can even access the tutorials directly from here. So if you wanted to watch this one, just click it and you can watch the tutorial here. If you want to learn more about these projects, you can click here. And I wrote a small article that talks about each project. You could even test the project out before you build it. So let's say that you wanted to test this one out. You can click here and you can test out the project. If you want to learn how to host your applications the way I did here, I wrote an article that shows you how to do it. So just click on this link and it's going to take you to this article, host your website for free with GitHub pages. And here I show you the steps that you need to take to host your application on GitHub pages. There's only four steps, so it's actually very simple to do. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create a folder. We're going to call this one image carousel and we are going to use images for this project. So I created another folder called IMG and these are the images that we're going to use. If you want to use these images, I'm going to leave a link in the description to the GitHub repo. But if you want to use your own images, I'm going to show you where you can download some cool HD images. All right, we're going to place this folder inside of this one. And now we're going to open up our Visual Studio. All right, let's open up that folder. And here it is. There's the IMG folder. All right, let's create our three files. So we have index.html, style.css, and script.js. All right, let's begin. We're going to start with our HTML. Let's link our CSS and JavaScript file to the HTML file. All right, and we are going to use Font Awesome for this project. So let's open up our browser and we're going to search for Font Awesome CDN. Look for the link from cdnjs.com and you're going to copy this link here because this is the latest version and we're going to paste it up here all right before we go any further i'm going to split up the screen right click open with live server now let's get started inside the body here we're going to create a container. We know that we need a pair of div tags. Let's give it a class of container. And within this container, we're going to create lots of little containers. Each container is going to contain one of our images. So let's create our first one. Let's give this a class of image fade. And let's add an image element here. Let's include the path to our image. Remember, it's in a folder called IMG. My first image is called LAM0. For the alt here, you could give it a description of your image. So this is a Lamborghini image. And we're also going to change the width to 100%. Now we're going to copy this. And we have a total of eight images. This is our first one. So we're going to copy this seven more times. So let's shift alt down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go back to the second one here. And we're just going to change the name. So this is lamb two, lamb three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have all of our images now. Now we're going to bring in two icons, one for the previous and one for the next button. So let's 
search for font awesome let's click on icons here and we're going to search for the previous button so just type in previous and this is the one that i'm going to use just click this here let's go back to the project and we're just going to paste that there let's go back and grab the right the one for the right button or the next button so just type in right actually i should have typed in next oh it's actually better so this is it right here and just copy that html there and we're going to paste that right under this one and here are two icons now remember when we click on these they're going to call on a function that's going to either show the next or the previous image so let's add an on click and we're going to call the function that we're going to create show image we're going to pass it a negative one and you guys will all see what that's doing right now when we get to the javascript portion of the application we're also going to give it an id we're going to call this one prev short for previous and let's do the same thing for the next button we're also going to call on the show image function there but this time we're going to pass it a one instead of a negative one let's also give it an id this one we're going to call next all right we have the images and we have the icons the last thing we need to add are the little dots so let's go down here let's create another div element and we're going to give this one a class of dots so inside this container we're going to add all of our dots we're going to use the span element let's give it a class of dot so each one of these represents one dot we have a total of eight images so let's copy this seven more times so shift alt down one two three four five six seven let me get rid of any spaces here just to make sure that our HTML looks nice and neat All right and I'm gonna create one more indent here and that should do it for our HTML usually we continue with the CSS but for this particular application I think it's gonna be more beneficial for you if I complete the JavaScript portion first because you won't be able to see the changes that we make here in CSS since all of these images are in the way the only change that we're going to make here is going to be to the image class we're going to use display none to block all of these images from showing up on the screen we're going to begin our javascript by creating a variable called index and we're going to initialize it to zero and remember these two icons when we click on them they're either going to show the next or the previous image so when we click on them they're going to call in a function that we called show image let's create it here show image we have a parameter coming in we're going to grab that with i and that i is either going to increment or de decrement our index if the user clicks on the previous button it's going to decrement it by one meaning it's going to show the previous image and if they click on the next button then it's going to increment it by one so it's going to show the next image now let's grab all of our images and store them in this variable images to grab them we're going to use get element by class name and we stored them in a class called image so now we have an array called images that contains all of our images we're going to do the same thing for the dots and we stored those in a class called dot now we're going to block all of the images from showing up on the screen i know that seems kind of weird because we already blocked them here but every time that the user clicks either on the next or previous button 
all of the images are going to reappear on the screen. So we have to block them each time. So we're going to use a for loop to block them. So we're going to iterate through each one of the images and we're going to block them one by one. As far as the dots are concerned, we're going to create a class named active for the dot that corresponds to the image that's currently displayed on the screen. This class is just going to turn that particular dot a little bit darker in color, but every time that the user clicks on either the next or the previous button, we're going to have to delete that class, similar to what we're doing with the images there. So let's create another for loop. All right, we're going to go through each one of the dots and we're going to delete the class name. To delete it, we're basically just going to use this built in function replace and we're going to replace the active class, which is the name of the class, with empty quotes. Now we actually haven't created that class yet, but we're going to create it in a moment with CSS. Now if the user is in the last image and they click on the next button, let's send them back to the beginning. So if index is greater than images length minus one, then let's set index to zero. But if the user is in the first image and they click on the previous button, then let's send them to the last image. If index is less than zero, then we're going to set index to the last element of the array. Now let's display the image that needs to be displayed on the screen. And we know which one that is with our index variable. To display it, we're just going to use display equals block. And we're going to give the dot that corresponds to that particular index the class name of active. So this dot is going to be a little bit darker than the rest. Once again, we haven't created this class, but we're going to create it in a moment with CSS. That's going to do it for this function. Remember when we run this application, the user is not going to click on the previous or next button, but we still want an image to show up on the screen. So we have to make a function call to this function. And we're going to pass it the index variable, which is initialized to zero. So the first image in our images array is going to display on the screen. All right, now let's go back to our CSS and start knocking this out. We're going to begin with the container where our images are stored. And we're going to create a border just to help you see what we are doing here. Let's change the width to 95%. Let's change the height of the container to the length of our window, 100 VH. Let's change the margin to auto so we can place this container in the center. And we're also going to make this container a flex box. The first option we're going to use of flex box is justify content center. And we're also going to use align item center to place our image in the center there. Let's also use flex direction column. And this is going to come in handy when we introduce our dots. We're also going to use position relative because we're going to use position absolute on these icons. And in order for us to use position absolute, we have to add position relative to the parent container, which is 
this container here. All right, that's going to be it for that. We're going to leave the image container as is. For the previous button, we're going to use position absolute. That's going to place it in the center there. Let me change the color so you can see it. And I'm also going to change the background color to black. And I'm going to remove that once we're done with adding features to the previous button. I just want to add that so you can see it a little bit better. All right, let's bring it down by 43%. And let's say zero to left, so it could be right in the edge here. Let's also give it a cursor pointer so the user can know that they can click on that. Let's give it a padding of 16 pixels. Let's also change the font weight to bold. That's going to make the icon just slightly a little bit thicker. And let's also change the font size to one rem. Each rem is equivalent to 16 pixels. We're going to give it a transition of 0 0.6 seconds. Don't forget the S there. And that's going to be for when we hover the button. We're going to make it change colors. But we don't want it to happen right away. We want it to take 0 0.6 seconds and we want it to be of type ease. Let's give it a border radius so it could have round edges on the inside. So zero, three pixels, three pixels, and zero. And also when you click on this, sometimes this gets selected and I don't like how that looks. So we're going to take that off with the user select none. All right, we can remove this background color now and we can just basically copy this for the next button because the features are basically the same the only difference is the left we're gonna change that to right let's give it that hover effect that I just mentioned So when you hover it, we're going to change the background color to black, but I want it to be of RGBA value of 0 0.5, just like that. For the dots container, we're going to use text align center, and we're also going to use margin top. We want to bring it down by 2% so it's not so close to our image all right before we proceed i want to remove this border here we don't need it anymore all right now let's create the dots let's give them a height of 15 pixels also a width of 15 Let's change the background color to gray. And let's use display inline block. Let's make them round. And let's also give them some margin, not on the top or the bottom, but on the left and the right, just two pixels. And we're also going to give it a transition to the background color of 0 0.6 seconds of ease. Now let's create the active class that I mentioned in the JavaScript portion. We're going to change the background color of the dot that corresponds to the image that's on display a little bit darker here all right when a user clicks on this button we want to have an animation to have the next image fade in 
So let's access the fade class, which is part of the image class. And let's add an animation. We're going to call it fade and we want it to last 1.5 seconds. To add the animation, we're going to use keyframes. Type in the name of the animation. And for this one, we're just going to change the opacity to 0.4. We're going to start at 0.4 and we're going to change, we're going to end at 1. All right, let's try it. You see the fade effect there? All right, the last thing that I want to do is first let me expand this. So you can see the image is pretty big. I don't like the image being that big, so I'm going to change the width of this container to 70%, and now the image is a lot smaller. The problem with that is when you're looking at it in a small screen, let me copy this. Let me show you. You see how it looks a lot smaller at 480 pixels, 320 and 240. So at 768 or less, I want the width to change to 100%. That way it looks a little bit bigger on the phone. So let's go back to the bottom. And we're going to add a media query. So at 768 pixels, we want to change the width of the container to 100%. All right, I think that looks a lot better. Now let me expand this. So this is full size and right at 768 pixels, it's going to expand to 100%. All right, that's going to be it for this project. I'll see you guys in project number seven.